Tropical storm Chantal turning inland, bringing heavy rain and flooding for some, while others look ahead to an unsettled pattern as we continue into the work week ahead. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Sunday, July 6th. And uh, yeah, we had Tropical Storm Chantal make landfall last night uh, just south of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I'll tell you, it was a pretty feisty tropical storm for some folks. Saw plenty of video of, of very gusty winds working into the Grand Strand. We had heavy rain. We've seen some tornado warnings this morning. Uh, we've seen new flood watches issued. So uh, Chantal definitely doing its job of uh, being a tropical system and bringing those tropical impacts. While all that's happening, though, we do have an unsettled pattern ahead. We're going to have a big heat for some. We're going to have severe storms for others and a little bit of both uh, for a lot of us, I think, throughout the week ahead. We're going to break all that down for you in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the weather here. And um, again, we are getting or we're already in hurricane season, obviously, as uh, we did have Chantal uh, yesterday and today. But uh, I imagine there's plenty more to come this season. So you're going to want to have the bell on so you're up to date for the latest in the tropics and anything else that may be on the horizon. All right, folks, well, let's dive on into things and start talking weather. We'll take a look at satellite loop here. This is our infrared loop and uh, doing a good job at showing where we have thunderstorm complexes over the country. And you can see one pretty easily here uh, over the Carolina Chantal, a relatively small tropical storm, but mighty in the core of what's left of it. A lot of heavy rain uh, working through the sand hills of North Carolina this afternoon, going to work up even further into North Carolina before the day is done. We've seen tornado warnings uh, associated with them. Uh, so Chantal, again, definitely one problem. Now back out west, uh, unfortunately, again, with Texas, uh, just devastating news over the past weekend. We've had more than 50 deaths confirmed from flash flooding and um, uh, just a, a tragic event out there unfolding. There's kind of good and bad news. The good news is I think the worst of it is over. The bad news is we're not completely done yet. We do have more rain on the way. We're going to break that down for you today for my folks out that way. And uh, obviously keeping everyone in our thoughts and prayers uh, that is dealing with that tragic flooding uh, back home here in North Carolina. Obviously, we're all too familiar with that as well with Helene last year. And uh, just uh, it goes to show Mother Nature does not care who you are or where you are. Uh, she will do um, crazy things that uh, we've still got a lot of work to do in terms of studying and figuring out here uh, in our field. So again, keeping you folks in our thoughts and prayers. Now, outside of those two areas relatively calm-ish, if you will. Uh, we do have some northern stream energy that's going to bring some active weather to the northern plains, including severe weather. But really, folks, it's nothing different than what we've already seen over the past couple of months out that way. It's been a very active, severe weather season for many folks in the northern plains here in this 2025. Now, let's take a look at current radar watches and warnings and uh, what else we got going on out there. So this is, again, the watches, the warnings, and radar imagery you notice not a whole lot going on out there. I will quickly zoom into a couple areas. Again, complex of storms uh, right around, you know, 1130, 12 o'clock Eastern time working through North Dakota, which is me, South Dakota rather, and uh, Nebraska. You can see that little MC uh, S there, mesoscale convective complex or system, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. Yeah, bringing some lightning and some heavy rain out that way. We've got a pocket of showers and storms associated with an upper level system into Wisconsin and Michigan uh, working on through uh, right now. So seeing some rain out that way today and then into the northeast relatively dry but notice some of those orange boxes heat advisories back on the table we're gonna have a hot couple of days here almost like a mini heat wave if you will we had a longer stretch heat wave a week or two ago uh, now this one gonna be shorter in time but still pretty intense with some of the heat and i'll show you those numbers here uh, also in today's video outside of that again down into texas still flash flood warnings and still slow moving pockets of storms now this further north than we've seen uh, again, uh, Kerrville out here is who just got absolutely devastated uh, with flooding not far from Fredericksburg and Austin. Also near Austin got a lot of heavy rain. Today, it's further north, uh, closer to Fort Worth and Dallas. Um, and the number's not quite as uh, insane as what we have seen, but still flash flood warnings and uh, flash flood emergencies here into areas of central Texas. So still dealing with that. And then obviously the other big story is uh, what is the remnants of Chantal? And at the time I'm recording this, again, this is around 1130. We do have a tornado warning uh, just to the south uh, west there of Fayetteville. Now, hopefully that'll expire for multiple reasons. One, we don't want a tornado warning. And two, I don't want to have to run to the station <laughs> should this get into Charlotte market and uh, have to go on air. So let's all keep our fingers crossed so we can keep the tornado threat uh, low today. But I do think there will be a couple more tornado warnings potentially before today is said and done. 
now let's take a look at uh, one more thing here before we um, take a look at Chantal a little more in depth. I know that wasn't a big look at it. We'll get more to it in just a second. But first, let's zoom things out and just take a look at the national view here in the upper levels and give you a sneak peek of what we're going to talk about in today's video. So here's Chantal. Here's one upper level storm. Here's another upper level storm. And uh, then a big ridge of high pressure back out into the desert southwest. So those are the key players on the field today. And the big story is going to be how these upper level pieces of energy move and where they go. And you can see as we move this ahead at a time, yeah, the pattern stays active and unsettled through the week ahead. We'll talk about that more in just a second. But first, let's swing on over, take a deeper look at Chantal, time out the rest of the rainfall and any other impacts that she may bring throughout today and tomorrow. Well, here's the latest cone from the National Hurricane Center, and I'll be honest with you, the cone not going to be super important at this point, but uh, the storm now becoming more, uh, we'll call it symmetrical, so where it is within that cone is actually um, going to make a little bit more sense to the forecast than maybe it did yesterday, and I'll tell you, right now, she's a little bit far to the west of the center of the cone, still in the cone, but you can see the center of the storm right here, and that's bringing this big shield of rain a little bit further west as well. If you tuned into WCCB Charlotte last night, or ABC Columbia I gave you the forecast for Chantal. All uh, right, now I think my forecast is doing okay. We're seeing that I-77 cutoff. If you're east of I-77, getting heavy rain. If you're west of there, honestly, a pretty nice, cool July day that uh, you know we don't get very often in this part of the country. So we'll take it. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and get the cone off the. Uh, off the screen here, just take a look at the rainfall. Uh, again, the sand hills up into the Uwaris, getting a pretty good amount of rain right now out of this thing. Uh, we're all done basically in South Carolina outside of some breezy conditions and uh, a couple leftover showers, but uh, really going to be a North Carolina problem from here on. And if we take radar off, you can see we do have some flood watches in effect for Asheboro, High Point, Greensboro, uh, Winston-Salem, back down to uh, Albemarle and to Anson County, Richmond County, and then again through the Sand Hills and even out towards Fayetteville and Raleigh could see heavy rain associated with this storm today. Could also see a small tornado threat. Not overly concerned about it. Again, though, we do have a tornado warning currently. And if I turn it back on, and uh, again, I say currently, so I wouldn't freak out about it because by the time you're watching this, not a big deal. But uh, you can see the highest threat of a quick isolated tornado going to be from the Outer Banks on down south towards uh, the Wilmington area and then inland out towards Greenville, North Carolina, uh, Fayetteville, and uh, getting close to the Raleigh area could even see a quick spin up today. So those will be the main hazards. Now let's time out the rest of this storm for you with the high resolution rapid refresh model. I think doing a relatively all right job here with the storm. Uh, this is uh, by this afternoon and uh, the model underdoing it a little bit on the coverage. Also the model a little bit east from what the trend has been over the past hour or two. But you get the general idea. A big shield of rain, small, compact, but mighty wherever it goes. Could drop, you know, two to four plus inches of rain uh, right where the core of the storm goes. I think we're going to get some rain up into Greensboro, into Raleigh. Again, I would shift this west a little bit from what you see. Uh, this is by 5 p.m. I'll also add the storm a little bit slower than was modeled last night. So uh, that's increasing the flooding threat a little bit and uh, kind of just slowing it down somewhat. So uh, I think anywhere within this black circle, we're going to see some uh, pockets of heavier rain this afternoon and evening before overnight tonight, pulling up north into Virginia. And you notice the core of this thing likely going up near Greensboro, Danville, and then into Virginia by overnight tonight. Again, it's small, but it's going to pack a quick punch wherever that heaviest banding goes, uh, likely near uh, Danville and then up towards Richmond by tomorrow morning and fizzling out over the Chesapeake by tomorrow afternoon. Now, how much rain could we get left out of this system? Um, again, this model is shifted probably a little bit further east than it should be, but you get the idea. There's going to be a corridor here of two to four plus inches of rain. Uh, you can see that on the model here. Now, eight to seven inches, that's probably overdoing it a little bit. Uh, we could see places, though, to get three to six inches. I would not be surprised. Again, though, I would shift it back out this way a little bit more towards the Uwaris compared to uh, where this model has it closer to Raleigh and Fayetteville. So uh, that's the latest there on um, Chantal. Uh, let's switch on over now and uh, take a look at the f flooding threat down into Texas and talk a little bit more about how much longer that could last uh, coming up in this next segment. Well, the big problem we've run into in Texas with this uh, flooding potential that we've uh, seen over the past couple of days is just how much water there is in the atmosphere just getting ready uh, to kind of get squeezed out. This is the precipitable water map, and uh, it shows you these very bright returns. And uh, anytime you get above a two on this scale, again, uh, you see two inches. That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the most rainfall you can get is two inches. We found that out. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than that. But basically, just know anytime you get over about two inches, 
that's when you really increase the potential for flash flooding. And today we have those higher numbers up north again near Dallas, Fort Worth, and just to the south and east. Uh, or south and west, I should say, of that metro area. Uh, now, unfortunately, this has been hanging around for a while. We've had these high precipitable water numbers that gets us through Monday into Tuesday. Kind of same old, same old. You see these higher end numbers before hopefully we dry things out a little bit or at least remove some of that moisture from the atmosphere by about uh, the middle to end of this work week. Now, the good news is uh, what we once had, which was multiple kind of surface boundaries running into each other and clashing, we've lost some of that. Now it's kind of just uh, one or two leftover boundaries, but that's still leading to pockets of heavy rain. And you can see it here. Uh, here's that heavy rain again this afternoon into Texas. Now, the hope is that this will not stay so stagnant. And uh, you can see today, again, how it kind of starts up near Dallas-Fort Worth, shifts back south a little bit towards Austin. We've got just these pockets of clashing outflow boundaries and big storms firing up. Severe weather threat not there, but the flooding threat is, again, due to all that water available in the atmosphere for these sun, uh, thunderstorms Excuse me, to take advantage of and ring out in the form of very heavy rainfall. Now, by the overnight, the good news is this looks a little bit more pulsy, so hopefully by tonight we can lose some of that rain, but by tomorrow afternoon, new boundaries, new afternoon storms, the coverage dwindling a little bit, though, compared to what we've seen over the past couple of days by Monday, and then by Tuesday morning here, we've got some complexes of storms coming out of the north. The good news, though, those will be moving quicker. So still heavy rain and still a flooding threat. However, um, uh, or I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and stay hopeful that we've uh, gotten past the worst of the flooding uh, here in central Texas. Now, rainfall to come. This is uh, the model I just showed you. Uh, notice, though, still pockets of heavy rainfall totals. We see some areas where we're going to get some training and some stagnant storms. We get three to six plus inches of rain, uh, but uh, not seeing those uh, double digit rainfall totals that we saw near Austin. We had nearly 20 inches of rain or so within a day or two um, a time frame. And if we move the map south again, you see the same general idea. It's these pockets of heavy storms. But again, I think the worst of it is out of here, but still going to run the threat there. Earlier, I showed you those flood watches and flash flood warnings. We're not out of the clear, but again, hopeful that the worst of it is behind us and we can slowly start that recovery process out in this part of the country. All right, folks, well, let's take a look now at uh, some severe weather on the way. I know kind of a Debbie Downer today with the news, but we do have more severe weather to track and rainfall. We'll give you the latest here coming up in this next segment. Well, the severe weather map today is, uh, yeah, it's still there. Unfortunately, we've got a slight risk up. That's a level two out of five out here from the front range into portions of Nebraska, West Kansas. And uh, we've got a couple other areas. We've got a little area here in, uh, near Detroit, Toledo, Fort Wayne, uh, Lansing, Flint, and then up into Maine. So a lot of little kind of mesoscale areas to watch. And then again in North Carolina with that uh, tornado threat that we mentioned. But uh, if we look at the tornado threat elsewhere in the country, small little area up here in Nebraska, more of the same, folks. It's kind of this the richer getting richer. If you're a storm chaser living in the plains, this has been your year for it. And, uh, you know, we've seen plenty of crazy stuff. But I do think wind will be the main threat today. You can see that hatched area, extra kind of strong wind, if you will, here, maybe 70 plus mile an hour gust in some of these storms. North Platte, Lexington, Nebraska, uh, back down into uh, Colby and Goodland and over towards Ray and Sterling could see some of those strong storms today. Uh, same thing up into that area of the Midwest and into Maine. Going to see the small chance for some strong wind. Hail, not a big threat out there today. Again, though, could see large hail into the plains. That's today. Let's take a look at the start of the week. Monday, yeah, we're back with a level three out of five now enhanced risk out here through portions of Nebraska. And that does include an elevated tornado risk tomorrow. North Platte over towards uh, Scotts Bluff, Sydney, Grant, Imperial, Ray, Sterling, McCook, down towards Goodland, up towards O'Neill, uh, Platte, Rosebud, Pine Ridge. I could keep naming towns out here in the plains. However, you get the point. Tornado risk will be there tomorrow, including another day of strong wind. That's what's driving this enhanced risk. Um, again, 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts in these complexes of storms as they form out here into the plains tomorrow will be something we need to watch. And out into the eastern U.S., a marginal risk from Cleveland up into uh, Utica, Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, and even clipping uh, the upstate of New York here towards uh, the Adirondacks and into uh, Burlington could see a couple strong storms tomorrow. Up that way, strong straight line winds would be the main risk. Then we get to day three. That's your Tuesday. Two areas to watch. The Mid-Atlantic, some uh, gusty winds with some of these storms, and then back into the plains, uh, a little bit more of an all-hazard look, although the tornado threat should be relatively low, I think, there uh, by that time frame. All right, that's a severe weather outlook. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, some more upper-level maps. Let's time out the week ahead and give you the latest on some of that heat that could be returning for your neck of the woods. 
Well, relatively stagnant upper level map, uh, all things considered, although it's summertime, so you would expect that. Still with that said, though, a couple areas that we need to watch for active weather to develop. Now, here we go by Sunday. Uh, you notice relatively quiet. We do have, though, a piece of energy up into the northern plains. That's going to help to create some of this severe weather. Uh, we've got the um, kind of uh, Bermuda uh, Ridge out here. Uh, the Southeast Ridge also is what people call it. Uh, flexing its muscles a little bit. That's going to return some of that high uh, higher temperatures and humidity to portions of the Southeast after Chantal gets out of here. Uh, so we've got that going on. We've got a ridge out here into the Southern Plains. We've got a piece of energy into California uh, and uh, just ridging in general into the Eastern U.S. going to once again continue to bring that heat back for many of us. Now, that's the early part of the week, heat in the east, storms in the plains. By the time we get to the middle of the week, some of that energy from the plains gets to the east and we're going to start to crank up rain chances in a bigger way, I think, for a lot of us. Again, it's summertime, so it's not super pronounced, but we do have a trough working on through the Mississippi River Valley. That's increasing storm chances, increasing rain chances, and uh, still going to stay hot, but with higher rainfall chances, temperatures probably not climbing up into maybe the upper 90s like we'll see Monday and Tuesday for a lot of us there uh, with an upper level map of this look. And then uh, the good news, or maybe not good news, is we do look to get another storm system by uh, Friday into Saturday into the northern plains. Um, now, some of the models kind of try to move that further into the east. The latest European kind of kicks it up into Canada. That can bring a return to severe weather once again. If it kind of hangs out in the east a little bit more, it could cool us down a little bit. So we'll keep a track of that. But I definitely think, generally speaking, for most of us, Monday and Tuesday, hot Wednesday through, you know, we'll call it um, Thursday or so, uh, stormy weather returning, really Tuesday through Thursday, I should say. And then by the weekend, a little bit more average weather, I think, uh, after the heat and the storms work on through. Let's give you a quick look at what it could look like from the European. Here's uh, this afternoon. Again, kind of what we've seen. We've got some of those storms up into the Midwest in the Ohio Valley. We've got storms into the Northern Plains, pockets of rain in Texas, and then Chantal in the Southeast. Moving it ahead, though, uh, here we go by your Monday afternoon. More pockets of storms developing into the Ohio Valley, complexes of storms into the Northern Plains. That's your Monday. We get this on into Tuesday. Some of that energy continuing to work east. Heavier rainfall chances into the southern uh, portions of the country from Texas to uh, portions of Arkansas into the Mississippi uh, River Valley, at least the lower portion of it, Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley. Then we get to your Wednesday, rainfall chances increasing into the Carolinas, Virginia, as that upper level piece of energy continues to swing on through, creating some lift. By Thursday, we keep it moving east, much of the east seeing some uh, widespread afternoon storms by Thursday. And then as we get on into Friday, more of the same. You can see that next storm system showing up on some of the models in the Midwest. But hopefully by the weekend, uh, you know, we can get a little bit of a break in the east. But we'll need to watch this next storm system. That's a that's a feisty looking storm there on the European. So that could bring some uh, pretty intense severe weather for July standards. We'll, we'll watch it though and we'll keep a look uh, on it coming up in a bit. Now, a problem here, or I say a problem, you know, a side effect of this pattern, we'll call it, uh, is going to be heavy rainfall potential. Isolated flooding concerns going to continue. Uh, the P-Watt anomaly, basically what I showed you earlier, but the anomaly for it, so the, you know, the greener, the more um, even purplish and blue colors you see, that's the more water we have in the atmosphere to kind of ring out in these storms. Then the drier colors are obviously the opposite of that. Notice this week, yeah, pretty moist for a lot of us in the east. That's going to increase the water uh, or the rainfall, we'll call it potential within these storms that develop. And uh, we're obviously going to need to keep an eye on that for more flooding potential. Hopefully, though, by the weekend, if we do get that next storm, maybe a pocket of drier air behind it about a week or so from now could try to filter in. It's getting out in a la la land, though, so we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated again nonetheless. Temperatures, like I said, we're going to get a heat, uh, a bit of a heat dome here in the early part of the week. Check out tomorrow, Monday afternoon. Uh, yeah, we're talking 15 or so degrees above average for a lot of us from the deep south up into the northeast. The only exception of the rule being where the leftovers of Sean Taller into eastern Virginia and into the Delmarva. But this is going to skyrocket temperatures back up into the upper 90s, heat index values into the triple digits. So we have some of those heat advisories I showed you earlier uh, for many of us. And uh, again, that's going to hang around. That's Monday. You get on into Tuesday afternoon, more of the same, but we get those afternoon storms to start to work on in. And uh, you're going to see uh, more average to below average temperatures into the plains. Still hot in the southeast where maybe those storms haven't quite arrived yet by Tuesday. But by Wednesday afternoon, uh, you can see a more widespread thunderstorm activity into the east. Warm back into the Rockies and uh, much more just typical uh, summer pattern, we'll call it there, by the middle and end of this work week. Alrighty, folks, that's all I got for you on this Sunday. Again, uh, a lot to talk about, a lot going on. 
And uh, we'll continue to keep you updated here on the channel. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe. I'll see you all tomorrow.